Pardon my pancreas, what's up? Today we're talking about the theory of insulin relativity in type 1 diabetes and how your insulin on board calculations are likely off. A breakthrough new discovery and discussion from one of our high level type 1 diabetes coaching calls. An amazing topic to cover. So we got a story for you today. Before we get into it, we're going to start with our theme song and then dive in. I've spent the last 10 years pushing the limits while identifying trends and patterns in my type 1 diabetes management. Follow along as I learn, apply, and share the fitness, nutrition, and lifestyle strategies that I've learned from diabetes experts around the world. The real question is, how can we live fearlessly with diabetes while maintaining stable blood sugars? This podcast is here to give you the answer. My name is Matt Vandevecht, head coach and co-founder of FTF Warrior, and welcome to Part of My Pancreas. All right. So not too long ago, I was actually on a coaching call with a few of my coaching clients and uh, we hold these calls twice a week, incredible discussions. And every once in a while, uh, we get some really interesting questions that we get to discuss. And uh, this one particular really got my brain the gears turning and uh, turned into a discussion that uh, kind of evolved into a new breakthrough for everybody on that call. It was really fun to have. So I wanted to share a piece of that with you, but instead of sharing the actual call itself, I wanted to open this discussion, kind of share the takeaways that we had from that. So what I'm first gonna read for you is the question that was submitted by one of my clients. Uh, we're gonna keep their privacy intact. So no names, nothing like that, but I'm gonna read you pieces of their question. We're gonna dive into it, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and read parts of that question that was submitted by the person. Uh, we'll start in here. It says, isn't the IOB a relatively imaginary idea? It appears that it is only an indication that your basal is probably set too low. If you set your basal to zero, then all injections would properly show as IOB. If you set your basal to five units an hour, then you would probably have to eat like crazy just to balance the insulin. I did this early on in my diabetes adventure when using Lantus and commuting to work on a bicycle. At the beginning of the week, my diet was about 2,400 calories, and by Friday, it had climbed to 4,000 calories just to keep my glucose levels safe. So we're going to dive into a couple pieces of this. The first is that this individual was initially using uh, Lantus. Right, and so they were adjusting on the go. Uh, this discussion went further into that the bicycle route this person took to work was quite long. And we determined that uh, the need of an increase in caloric consumption by the end of the week was also likely due to insulin sensitivity building up. Right, so as you bike Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, by Friday, all of that exercise is stacking up on top of each other, leading into less of an insulin need. But the question at hand, of course, surrounds insulin on board. And if you adjust your basal insulin, does that adjust the insulin on board calculation? Now, for those of us on insulin pumps, it calculates the insulin on board for us, right? And uh, this all started initially with myself seeing an interesting anomaly when I had bolused for a lunchtime once. And uh, initially I had gone into my lunchtime meal, I had dosed, and I'll give you exact units for the purpose of this discussion, but uh, these don't represent my actual units delivered, rather just uh, arbitrary numbers, right? So let's say that I had given 10 units of insulin for this meal. When I had finished the bolus, you know, it had told me delivery completed, uh, the insulin pump that I use had only shown eight and a half units that were on board. And I thought, well, that can't be right. Uh, I just dosed X amount. Let's look again, we're calling it 10 units. Uh, why are only eight and a half units showing as on board? And so I immediately called the insulin pump company and said, hey, uh, I have, well, some mystery amount of insulin on board. Why isn't it showing the amount that I bolused? I checked the pump history. It shows that the amount that I chose to deliver was delivered, but it's showing a whole unit and a half less. What's going on? And they ended up getting their manager on the call because everybody was confused, right? Uh, the pump said I had delivered the amount that I intended to, but on the insulin on board calculation, it showed it was less. Now, I'll save you some time and, and a two hour phone call with tech support lets you know that the insulin on board calculation had taken into account uh, a lower blood sugar that I had previously where the pump had removed my basal insulin. So the example that my client had given where uh, had you subtracted your basal to zero that any injection given on top of that would technically be insulin on board. Some of the insulin pumps these days are smart enough to consider that when showing insulin on board as active insulin. Uh, this isn't always going to be the case. It's not always true. and It's not a perfect calculation. These algorithms are not without error uh, and do require that you do your own research, have your own understanding of how blood sugars work. However, in that situation, 
the lowered amount of insulin on board was showing because it had calculated the extra insulin that was missing to cover the basal that it had removed to help me get out of that low blood sugar. So let's just say that I had missed a unit and a half because it had removed my basal insulin while I was low, that when I went into my lunchtime dose and delivered, let's just call it again, 10 units, right? It subtracted the one and a half that I was missing from earlier from that dose to calculate what would be the existing insulin on board had I given or had I, I received basal and then not dose the full amount. So you can see that the insulin on board calculation already, it, it kind of changes relative to the situation, right? All these different options we have where we can adjust basal in real time. It's a very interesting new piece to our diabetes management. Now, back to my client's initial discussion where if you had reduced your basal insulin all the way to zero, then hypothetically, and this is largely what this discussion was about was hypotheticals, right? But hypothetically, if we reduced our basal insulin or Lantus in his case to zero, then wouldn't every injection given on top of that be considered insulin on board because it would be fast acting insulin delivered to cover that missing basal. And then alternatively, if you had five units per hour, if you're on an insulin pump, you know, maybe if you only needed one, but you were giving five, which is five times too many, well, you'd have to be eating all day long just to avoid going low, even though you technically would not have any insulin on board that was shown. Interesting, right? So how can we go low when zero insulin on board is present? And that's the part of this discussion that we're gonna start with. So first off, if you want your insulin on board calculations to be precise, as I do, right? And as all of my clients do, we enjoy precision, having actual control over our diabetes and over our blood sugars, first step, needs to be getting your basal settings tightened. You gotta have the exact amount of basal either programmed into your pump or uh, an understanding of how much basal you need for your long acting insulin, whether it's Lantus, Traceba, Basilar, like any of these things, right? Your basal comes first. Now, the second part to this equation, as my client had mentioned, was beginning of the week, didn't need as much glucose to keep level end of the week needed a ridiculous amount of calories almost double what they were consuming beforehand just to stay stable with their blood sugars now what's interesting about this is that we understand that insulin on board can be impacted by your insulin sensitivity uh, and also conversely your insulin resistance right so as our insulin resistance and or insulin sensitivity is changing on a day-to-day -day basis so does our insulin on board calculation because you may need more or less insulin. Therefore, insulin on board is relative to your unique insulin sensitivity for that day. Oh, oh, oh no, right? This is starting to get a little bit complicated. Uh, and if this is a little bit over your head or if it just doesn't make sense, it's okay. You can rewind, watch this thing over again. But um, I'll rewind. I just dated myself a little bit, right? VHS days. Anyways, as we look at insulin on board being relative, not only to the individual, but also to the unique situation in that set of data for that day, sometimes even the hour, we have to reconsider what we deem as insulin on board. So one unit of insulin on board on Monday for this individual would be different than one unit of insulin on board on Friday, because on Monday, they had their standard, you know, kind of their, their norm. And by Friday, after riding their bike five days a week, right, for I think it was like 40 miles or something. <laughs> it was a lot of riding. By Friday, that one unit did a lot more damage, we'll call it quote unquote, like it was more effective because they were more insulin sensitive by Friday with all of that activity. So now we're looking at insulin on board being relative to the activity level, but also to the diet, to the sleep, to the stress, to the hydration. So your insulin on board is a great starting point, but by no means is it the end all of how much effectiveness the insulin is going to have on your blood sugars. So we have to understand how these different variables come into play, not only as an independent variable, but as they interconnect, right? Increase or decrease in activity, increase or decrease in carbs, fats, proteins, fibers, increase or decrease in your sleep, in your hydration, in your stress, in your hormone fluctuations. What else are we looking at to determine our true insulin on board? And I, I'm sure maybe you've experienced this as much as I have as well, but you've probably had a high blood sugar where you've given insulin and it feels like you're injecting water. <laughs> like nothing's happening. Maybe you're at, I don't know, 218 and you give insulin, you wait for an hour or two, 
Nothing has happened so far. Hour three, hour four. Nothing's happening. More insulin. Nothing happens. It feels like it's just not working. And yet you look at your pump and you've got multiple, or if you're MDI, you know, you look at your spreadsheet, right? You've got multiple units of insulin on board that should be bringing your blood sugars down. The potential is there to lower your blood sugars, but for some odd reason, it's just not working. It's interesting, right? And alternatively, you could have zero insulin on board, as did this individual in our coaching call, and yet still be going low. How is that possible? Well, because insulin on board is relative. Now, what we also want to look at, again, are the other factors at play here. And this is kind of feels like a, a masterclass kind of topic. It just taught a masterclass a couple of days ago. So still in teacher mode, coaching mode. But when we look at the other factors as well, this individual also was very active, riding their bike to work every single day to and from long durations of activity. So in this example, it wasn't just the insulin on board that was uh, that we need to look at. Instead of also looking at the burn rate of glucose as they were on their bike rides. So we look at different types of exercise, burning glucose. We look at uh, glucose utilization, outpacing glucose production, right? Can lead to a lowering blood sugar effect. Uh, look at the different types of exercise for each individual, aerobic versus anaerobic. There's a lot of factors we can continually break down into subcategory after subcategory after subcategory. There's a lot of science behind your blood sugars. It's not just a simple up and down calculation. It's not just as simple as insulin on board. And if it were with insulin on board being relative to the situation and to the individual, is that something that you can truly rely on without checking in on more than once a day? So when we look at our blood sugars, looking at the insulin on board, yes, it is an excellent starting point. Understanding insulin on board, the potential of that insulin to act on your blood sugars is very important to understand. And if you don't understand that, I want you to search insulin on board FTF warrior on YouTube. I have an entire episode just describing insulin on board and going through the science behind that as well. But if you do understand the concept, that'll be enough for us to start right now and dive into a bit more of the relative component of insulin on board and how each day needs to be its own situation. There is no autopilot with diabetes. You can never fully remove yourself from the equation. Yes, you can have formulas in place. That's what we teach people to do. So you remove most of the mental effort that is required to stay in range. And it feels more like autopilot, but you can never fully remove yourself. Diabetes always requires that you have one hand on the controller, one finger on the joystick, making sure we're directing and guiding where we want it to go. And so as a result, looking at insulin on board being relative, how do we get an eye for where blood sugars are going to head? One of the first pieces of this puzzle is understanding the variables, being able to see the entire puzzle, the whole game board and saying, okay, uh, activity is going to impact my blood sugars. The types of foods that I eat are going to impact my blood sugars. Uh, is the insulin bad? <laughs> That's going to impact my blood sugars. If I'm wearing an insulin pump or injecting into a certain area, is that site location going to increase or decrease the rate of absorption of the insulin, right? How can I increase the circulation of the insulin? In this last masterclass I taught, we talked about accelerators and decelerators. How do you make insulin work faster, slower? How do you manipulate the blood sugar variables? See, if you want to dive deep into diabetes, you can do so. There is an amazing amount of science behind these things that you can dive into and truly geek out on. This is the stuff that I love. I obsess over this. It's, it's a passion for me. This is why I coach and train others on how to stabilize and predict blood sugars. But if I can get you to bring home one core concept today, it's, it's not a fun one but it will change your life and make diabetes simpler in the long term. And that is that diabetes is not easy. It is not a one variable kind of thing where you take your medicine and go about your life. Everything you do in your life impacts your blood sugars. And if you look at insulin on board as a standalone, as okay, that's what I can expect, I can walk away, you're gonna have a hard time. Right, because there have been days where my calculations on the insulin pump show zero insulin on board. And yet for some reason, I've got double arrows down at 70 on my CGM and I am chugging juice boxes. See, it doesn't always make sense if you look at the surface level. You have to understand what's going on underneath the surface if you truly expect to master your blood sugars. 
All right, so that's what I want you to take home today. I hope this was helpful. And of course, if you're looking at what is under the surface, you're gonna have to start somewhere, whether it's reading books, attending conferences, showing up to our master classes, finding sources, experts, or mentors that can help coach you and teach you in the ways of how the heck to control type one diabetes. And of course, we do have a resource for this that feeds it to you in a more uh, applicable manner that allows you to take action on smaller bite-sized chunks rather than trying to drink out of a fire hose and just getting all of it at once in one, uh, one sitting. So what we did is we broke apart all of these key lessons into actionable takeaways that we deliver literally to your doorstep once a month. Now we get this newsletter we send out. It's got actionable insights. It's what's working, what's not, new methods that our clients are using just like this discussion. In fact, next month's issue, I will be diving deeper into the theory of insulin relativity, what we discussed on that coaching call and how it pertains to your diabetes management and how you can adjust your strategies on a day-to-day -day basis. It's some really fascinating stuff. I like to geek out about it. And if you think that you'd like to geek out with us, learn some of these more advanced topics on how you can make diabetes simpler, require less effort in order to maintain control of your blood sugars. What I want you to do right now is go check out this website, renegadenewsletter.com. Okay, go grab it. I'm sending it out in a couple of days. It's going to print right now. Uh, but if you grab it real quick, you can still get in on next month's newsletter where we are talking, like I said, deeper into the topic of the theory of insulin relativity, how to get controlled blood sugars, how to get an idea of the whole playing field. You know, how does activity impact your insulin on board? Uh, why was he able to ride his bike and eat double the calories with only one shift. All right, a lot of these topics and more will be covering there. So uh, if that's something you want delivered to your actual doorstep, I actually really like to read things in print. Uh, so if you do too, this would be one way to learn about your diabetes and make it fun, entertaining, but also helpful and actionable. So head over to renegadenewsletter.com, grab your issue real quick, sign up for that, activate it so we can get that shipped out to you uh, before you miss your spot for the next month's letter. All right, so uh, outside of that, understand that one of the best things that I can teach you is how to think differently about your diabetes. And that's the entirety of what this episode is about, is understanding that it's not this one quick equation. It's not just insulin to carb ratio. It's not just, well, how much insulin did I take? It's about how all of these variables interact and come together to impact blood sugars. And when you truly understand that, it's gonna open up a whole new world into predictable, consistent, and stable blood sugars. And that is what I want for you, all right? So what I can do here is teach you how to think about diabetes. And if you can think differently, you'll approach it differently, which means you have a better chance of actually mastering this thing and living your best life where diabetes doesn't have to hold you back. All right, so if that sounds good, go to renegadenewsletter.com. I look forward to seeing you join our tribe over there. Have an amazing rest of your day. If you have not yet be sure to hit subscribe love seeing you guys in the comments as well all right i keep forgetting to do this so we're gonna add it on real quick towards the end right here time and range for my last week 95 percent i will also be sharing about how to do that because you do not want to miss out on how to increase your time and range because oftentimes it increases your quality of life as well when blood sugars are cooperating so uh, that's my 95%. As you can see, that's a 4% decrease from last week, which means last week was 99% in range. I was so close. Someday I'll get the 100 for a week straight. But uh, for now, if you want to learn how to get your time and range increased, how to figure out insulin on board, how to understand, how to think about your diabetes, head over to renegadenewsletter.com. I talk about all the behind the scenes stuff and those newsletter issues. As you can probably hear some noise in the background, Brooklyn is calling my attention. <laughs> I gotta make sure she's okay. Uh, look at her, yeah, she's doing good, she's happy. Uh, but I gotta go anyway. So hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Be sure to hit subscribe, like, check out the other episodes, get over to that renegadenewsletter.com to grab your issue before they get shipped out in a couple days. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Keep up the fight.